Hi everybody! Welcome to my live. <laughs> I have Teddy joining us from Sydney, Australia tonight. She's gonna hop on here any second and we're gonna have a little chat with her. Um, we had a great conversation the other night. I actually met her through uh, the last masterclass that Melanie and Lear did. We got connected in the Facebook group and she's just an incredible human. And I cannot wait to share her with you. So she, we're gonna hang out. We're gonna wait for her to jump on and then we will get rolling. I hope everybody's having a great um, Friday. I did, I had a very busy day. Massaged a lot of people. Um, it was fun, it was good, I'm glad to be home. Yay, here she is. Hi. <laughs> I was worried. I thought it was just like fighting. This is the first time I'm doing this, so yeah, I've I've never um, joined a live discussion before. Uh, so yeah, let's do it. I'm so yeah, excited. Let's do it. Yeah, technology. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? How was your day today? Oh, I was really good. Uh, we had a successful celebration on my son's birthday yesterday. Um, it was the first time in a long time that the whole family had gotten together um, because of the lockdowns and them li living about an hour away from us. So it was very special to have him and his girlfriend with us. And I cooked a vegan uh, dinner for them and it was successful. Yay, <laughs> it was so oh, cool so at one point. Cool. I wasn't sure how it was going to go. Um, one of the dishes that I had ambitiously planned um, wasn't coming out the way that I wanted it. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to wrap my brains on, how can I fix this? How can I fix this? And um, yeah. so I, because the flavor that I was looking for wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And so, and because that dish is traditionally cooked with meat, mm -hmm. I couldn't get the flavor right because it didn't have meat. So I'm trying to um, improvise on what flavors I could add in. So mm -hmm. I successfully did it and it was a hit. Oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like a superhero now. <laughs> you are a superhero. I was gonna tell you, I love how your Instagram um, name says Mother of Dragons. That's so yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was a fan of great Game of Thrones and so my favorite character. Yes, yeah. yes, and my favorite character was Daenerys, the Mother of Dragons. And I have she has three dragons. I have three boys. There so. you go. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Oh well, do you want to like kind of introduce yourself and tell people what what it is that you do? Right. Thank you. Um, my name is Teddy, and hence Teddy Chutes. People uh, use. To, to tell me I have an attitude and a positive one, I hope. <laughs> so I named my Instagram Teddy Choose. It's like attitude only better. So, <laughs> yeah. so I I was a paralegal for many years. Um, I was in the legal um, industry. Um, and I enjoyed that because I wanted to be a lawyer when I was younger because my dad was a lawyer and I started um, you know, helping my dad type documents since, you know, when I want, since I learned to type at 12. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know what he was doing. I, I was interested in the law. And so I helped um, prepare some of his uh, witness depositions and all that. And I enjoyed it. Uh, so by the time I hit um, university, um, I could already type and one of my subjects in the in the course that I was doing was typing and my, my teacher was so impressed at like how, how did you know how to type this fast you're supposed to be just starting and I said no I've been typing since I was 12 because we had a typewriter at home my dad's a lawyer I used to type documents for him and my friends used to ask me to type their essays for them so I got really good at it um, and so when I when I came to Australia um, I, uh, my first job was in the exports industry, but, um, you know, I, I enjoyed the interaction with clients, but, um, after a while I wanted to get into legal because, um, I wanted to be in that area. Yeah. 
So I got in and I stayed there for oh, 20 years. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I got tired of it. And um, I got into coaching study in 2014. But I, in the middle of doing that course, my coaching course, I got accepted into a job in, in a legal firm. Mm -hmm. And it was a really good um, uh, job. It was a really good position, really, really good role. And um, so I accepted it and pushed my coaching ambitions to the side for the meantime. I stayed with that company for four years. And then I got to the point where I just wasn't growing anymore. I just wasn't feeling challenged anymore. And I really wanted to get into doing something that I actually love and enjoy, which is helping people. Yeah. And that's, that's one part of the job that I enjoyed is because I knew I was helping clients. I was resolving issues for clients. They were happy when their issues are resolved. And that was very satisfying for me. But now I wanted to do it on the human level. You know, I wanted to empower people. I wanted to, especially women, um, because I come from a country where the culture um, kind of puts women as a second class citizen. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there's not, not a lot of respect for women. Um, in my country, they're very sexualized, they're very uh, objectified. And so I wanted to um, let the women in my country yeah. um, know how powerful they are and that enough is enough and they should not be taking shit from, you know, from yeah. anybody, you know. I love um, it. it's a, yeah, it's a very patriarchal society. I mean, growing up with my father, being so, uh, being the patriarch, of course, um, I respected him, I looked up to him, and um, he became a judge eventually, but he was dictating to us girls, there was five of us, I have four sisters, three brothers, he was dictating to us what we should be studying, mm -hmm. what we should be doing with our lives. I wanted to be a lawyer, he didn't want me to because you're a woman, you know, so Whoa. my other sister wanted to be a teacher, yeah. But she was, you know, um, t told to, to become, to study commerce and accounting. So she became a, a certified public accountant. Mm -hmm. And she's good at it, but I don't know that she loves it. Yeah. My second sister wanted to be something else. I can't remember now what she wanted to be. But um, she also was told to study commerce and become an accountant. Yeah. Then it was my turn. And I said, no, I'm not going to be an accountant. I'm not going to study commerce. I'm, I wanted to study law. And she says, no, you can't because you're a woman. So, and, and I, that's, it just didn't go down well with me. So I said, okay, then I'm leaving the Philippines. So I went to Australia. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so inspiring. So that's yes. how you ended up in Australia. Yeah, that's how I ended up in Australia. And, um, and I, I ended up being married here, married to an Australian man, and we have three sons. They are now age 25, sorry, he just turned 26, 26, and last night my second son turned 28, and my eldest son is 29 and a half. Wow. So, yeah, it, it's been a very interesting life here. <laughs> Yeah, but because of what I went through, I wanted to empower other women. I wanted other women to know that they have the power to decide what they want to do with their life and not let anybody else outside of them dictate what they should be doing, how they should be, um, you know, um, conducting themselves, how they should act, what, how they should speak, and all those sort of things. They don't have to... Um, subscribe to somebody else's belief so yeah. i got into um uh, inner power coaching is which is my business yeah. um which is to remind people uh women in particular uh, but I, I i have taught the same concept to my children who are all boys of course um and it's just personal empowerment so i wanted to focus on women because i see that there's a need there yeah. although there, there's now i've seen a need for men to step up too because they have been feminized so much. I I am oh all about God. sensitivity, but do not feminize our men. Yes. Oh my know? gosh, yes. 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 So the polarity then, between the masculine and feminine is so important mm, for yes. our relationships and just like even our culture. 
Mm, mm. They have a role to play in yes. this world, you yes. know, we have to balance the masculine and the feminine. I, I'm all about being in touch and being aware of your feminine side, but do not feminize our men. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I just wanted to um, remind people how, how to acknowledge and claim that inner power, how to step into it at will. Yeah. and be able to make decisions from that vantage point from the from the um, standpoint of being in your power rather than being in um reacting to a situation you know and and not being making decisions when you're not being inside your own power yeah yep exactly so, yeah. Yeah. that's what i do <laughs> that's amazing i love that so much oh thank you yeah yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit? I know we were talking the other day about manifestation. Yeah. Do you want to like, yeah. do you have, when you manifest, do you feel like you have like a process or do you feel like it's different every time? Or is it more of like a response or what are your thoughts on that? There is no one process yeah. for manifesting, but the, the key point to manifestation is the feeling point, the emotion that you attach to it, because that's the vibration that you're sending out to the universe. It's not the words that we say that call in what we want. It's the emotion that we attach to what we're calling in. So for example, a lot of people say, but I always tell the universe I want money. Uh, yeah, you're saying you want money, but inside of you, the emotion that you have attached to money is, I can't have it. I can't have it. I want it, but I can't have it. I want it, but how? The how is not your problem. The how is the universe's job. All you have to do is make it, um, make it easy for the universe to deliver it to you by keeping yourself at a high frequency vibration, which is love, hope, appreciation. You know, when you're in when you're in the frequency of hope, you're closer to getting what you want than than when you are in a in a frequency of need. Yes. You know, when you're needing, you're shutting down the 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 doors to your warehouse, you know? Yes. So oh the delivery gosh. cops can't get out of the warehouse yeah. because <laughs> you've shut the warehouse down, mm -hmm. you know? Keep it open by um, the work is being happy. I know the price you have to pay is happiness. <laughs> How dare <Being> you? <laughs> I'm not saying you're going to be happy all the time. Yeah. No, it, it, that, that's almost impossible, right? You can't be happy all the time. There's always going to be something that you're not 100% pleased with. But the work is, how do I shift from this emotion to happy? How do I shift from this emotion to hope, yeah. to less frustration, to less anger, mm -hmm. you know, um, to, to a sense of, of power? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, when they are in a point of... Um, when the challenge is upon them and it's it's so big that they feel like they can't deal with it and they go down into uh, hopelessness yeah. or desperation or powerlessness, mm -hmm. you know, and then they get to the point where they've cried so much they started to get angry. Yeah. That's the next level. Anger is actually a good um, step to get to in terms of the emotional journey because what at anger the frequency of anger gives you back your power yes oh my gosh yes yes this I is when that. you start to focus you start to what can i do you know it starts with how can i make this work what can i do to this person how can i fight back how can i push back yeah. the, the, the idea is not to push back because that's just going to get you <laughs> that's just going to hold yeah. you in that position the the idea is to how do i overcome this sense of powerlessness this anger this um frustration um to get to hope what can i turn my attention to it is where our attention is that brings the emotion mm -hmm. so when whatever it is that we're looking at there's an emotion attached to it we may not necessarily be some uh, con consciously aware of it but subconsciously our body is responding to it. Yeah. Yep. 
I so love yeah, that. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking when you were talking about anger um, being actually an empowering emotion. Um, mm. I thought, I read a lot of, I don't know if you know Dr. Christian Northrup, like women's bodies, women's Yes, bodies. I do. Yes. Yeah, I love her. So she talks a lot about anger though and how we're kind of conditioned as women not to express our anger. Like it's like kind of frowned upon, like, no, be a nice girl, you know, don't be so angry. And when we, yeah. when we don't express our anger though, we hold it in our bodies and it can mm. cause us like illness. Oh, so <laughs> it manifests terrible things in yeah. our bodies when we don't express yeah. it. So yeah. I'm all about like, that's something that I've had to learn because I'm like, I'm not an angry person, but sometimes I, you, you have those feelings and it's healthy. Mm. Like it's a really mm. healthy thing to feel and to express yeah. as long as you do it yeah. in a healthy way. Mm. Yes. I know. Um, I know some people who hold their anger so much because they want to be nice. They don't want to cause a scene. They don't want to be thought of as the, um, the nagging person or, you know, the complainer. Um, so they just hold it in. But what happens when we hold in our anger is we tend to turn the anger towards us. And then we get we get saddened by that. This is all happening subconsciously and in very very um, incremental um, steps, right? We don't notice it happening, but in the end, we end up with depression because we're so angry with ourselves and we don't know how to express it anymore because we've held it on, we've held on to it so much for so long that we don't know how to let it go anymore. Yeah, and, and so I feel don't. like if you're like holding anger instead of expressing it and like kind of utilizing it in a constructive way, it like lowers your frequency on the emotional scale. Absolutely. Right? Is that what I'm hearing you say? Absolutely. Like it leads to hopelessness. Whereas like if you're yeah. going from hopelessness to anger, that's actually a step in the right direction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, anger is the first step to gaining your power back. Yeah. Sure. I remember what happened to me at one point we were, um, in the Philippines. I, I don't know if I've mentioned this to you um, in our last talk. My, I, I took my family to the Philippines uh, to build a business. Mm -hmm. And my parents were unhappy about that decision because they thought I already had a good life here in Australia. Why would I come back to a poor country and, you know, um, take my chances there? We don't know if our business is going to be successful, yada, yada, yada. And I have young children. Why did I uh, uproot my children from a nice house to to a small apartment in in the Philippines, right? Yeah. And so I had this discussion where um, my mother left the Philippines to go to Canada because she was so upset with me. She didn't want to deal with me, and she went to Canada to complain to my sister about me. <laughs> Meanwhile, my father was left to handle what she couldn't handle, and so my father, what my father did was called my siblings who were still in the Philippines. Um, and had like a intervention, a family intervention to talk to me about my decision to be in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And I was so hurt by the whole thing, by the whole drama, because I didn't know that, that that was the reason my mother went to Canada, right? That, that she left because of what it, she was feeling about my decision and that she had passed my father to deal with me <laughs> and that my father was important enough to... Um, to have all my other siblings involved, right? And, 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 and talk about how I was raising my children, which is very different from how everybody else in my family did, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I was so angry about it. At first, I was so hurt. I was so sad and I was, I was so in pain. Like my heart was in so much pain. I remember being in the car with my husband because they didn't let my husband be part of the meeting. So I was telling my husband everything that was happening. So I was reliving it by telling him about it. And so the pain was so intense. And I decided at that point, I'm going to go back because this is not my tribe anymore. I thought I was coming home. Yeah. This doesn't feel like home anymore. So that was the point where I decided Yes, Australia is my home. This is that's where I belong. Yeah, that's where my children belong. Yeah. Um, because uh, just the pain that I went through, mm -hmm. I knew that I needed to be in Australia, but I was trying to build a different life in the Philippines, mm -hmm. but it didn't feel like something that is right for my family anymore. 
because yeah. of the, you know, the judgment that I was getting from my family. And so at that point, I was kind of hurt and, and hopeless that I would get love from my family, you know? Um, and I said to my husband, um, let's go back. Yeah. Let's go back. So that's yeah. when I got angry at my mother. <laughs> I got angry at my mother. Why didn't she confront me? Why didn't she tell me? We yeah. always had open conversations in the past. So I didn't mm -hmm. understand why she wouldn't talk to me directly about it. And she had to go to, to Canada to, to talk mm -hmm. to my sister about it. Yeah. And my sister talking to me about it. And it, it went on for a few days. Yeah. So I just, I just decided, you know, I'm not going to deal. I'm not going to. Yeah. put up with that anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to have that. I did have a conversation with my mother much later on mm -hmm. um, when like many years later on and I told her about it mm -hmm. and she doesn't even remember. Wow. She doesn't even remember doing that or feeling this. No, I wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have said that. And, yeah. and so, so yeah, but, but she has dementia now. So oh. I don't, it could be part of that. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, no. When you're at your um, at that point, that when you get up from being des in despair, yeah. hopeless, and powerless yeah. to change something, and then you get to anger, that's when you make decisions. Yes. That's when you start focusing on mm -hmm. what's right for you mm -hmm. and what's no longer serving you. Yeah, one hundred percent. And and that's a, and then what comes. Do you know, like on the emotional scale, like what comes after anger? Because it is a step in the right direction, but it's not where you want to stay, right? There is a step between anger and frustration, which okay. is <clears throat> revenge. Oh. It's not something that people need to take action on, yeah. but just the emotion of revenge, the emotion of, I'm going to do this. Because yeah. that's where, you know, that's where you're, you're feeling your power. You're feeling that yeah. there is something you can do. Yeah. Just that don't take so action. so interesting. So <laughs> don't, revenge don't is actually... Someone, don't, don't stab someone because you're angry. <laughs> um, no, it's just the emotion of revenge tells you that there is something that you can do, that you are no longer powerless, yeah. that you have... Um, within you a power that can change your situation yeah. and it's not necessarily inflicting pain on somebody else or inflicting um, um, injury to somebody else yeah. it's just feeling it feeling it feeling it and then rising from that feeling yes. to frustration that is so cool. frustration is, a, is, a, is a higher frequency level than revenge which is higher than anger. Okay, yeah. So it's so revenge is almost like anger, but with like an action behind it. Like it's like you're gonna do with something. A focus. Yeah, with yeah. a focus to doing something. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, like back to what we were who we were talking about, Christian North, Doctor Christian Northrop. She says like yeah. sometimes you want to just like take a towel and like hit a chair or like punch a pillow or write yeah. a really like yeah. angry letter, mm. and that could be like the that could be the energy of revenge. Like it's not, you're, you're not going to go actually hurt a person, but mm. you're going to have a, you are going to write a letter. You are going to like express your feelings in a way that's mm. healing yeah. for you. Cause it's about, it's about healing yourself. You know, it's the yeah. other person is just a reflection or like a mirror. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Everything and everyone around us, everything and everyone that is in our experience that is manifest in our physical experience is a reflection, is a mirror. Yeah. It's reflecting something back to us, a part of us that we are not paying attention to. Yeah. Yeah. So when someone is being rude to you, thank them. Thank them for making you aware about something in your vibration that's causing that to appear yeah. in physical form. Yes. And then you can deal yeah. with it within yourself, heal it within yourself, and then you don't have to call that experience in again. Exactly. You're processing it. You're, I use a lot of processes um, when dealing with things like that, when I'm confronted with something that is so in my face, right? Um, that is so revealing for me. I hope on upon it. Have you heard of that process? Hope on upon it. Yes. Yeah. I don't remember the right order, but I know what you're talking about. It's like yeah. I'm. It. I'm sorry. Yeah. I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. Yes. 
I'm sorry. I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. Yeah. I don't think that the, the, the order matters so much as long as you say those, those um, uh, statements. And I do that over and over again until I finally come down to the feeling and actually feel it internally and viscerally within me. Yeah. That is. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 I have a friend who taught me how to release um, some of this um, angry energy because mm -hmm. there was a point in my life where I was always angry. Like, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even know why. Like, someone would say something to me and I would snap at them for no reason. It's like, what yeah. the fuck did I do? <laughs> <laughs> you did not hear that from me. Um, <laughs> yeah, what the hell did I do? Um, and then I, I, I go back and I realize, why did I do that? Why did I snap? What is yeah. it that's making me feel this way? That's making me respond this way to what's around me? So I go inwards. Um, and this friend of mine, uh, we were at an event, um, like a um, personal development event, and I was one of the volunteer crew. And she saw me in tears. Mm -hmm. And she thought I was just reacting to what was happening on stage because it can get emotional sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, are you okay? And I, and I just burst into tears. So she took me out of the room um, and asked me what's going on. And I told her what was happening. And um, she said, okay. She took me to another room, closed the doors, and there was no window. It was just, it, it, it was like a storage room. There were chairs in there. And I said, and she said, I wanted to scream to the top of your lungs, you know, just scream it out until your body just relaxes, yeah. you know, and until you haven't got it in you anymore. Yeah. So I just scream. <laughs> At yeah. first it was awful. Awesome. Why would I scream? You know, like I've never done that before, but yeah, powerful. it was a, a very powerful way of letting um, negative energy out of your body. Mm -hmm. And I know of another um, coach, um, she taught us this process. Um, she goes and puts on her boxing gloves mm -hmm. and she goes to her garden and she starts punching a pillow in the garden and she ended up, cause she, was, she didn't have a, um, a punching bag. So she has a pillow and she starts punching and <laughs> screaming at the pillow. And, and so that way she doesn't hurt her wrist or her, um, her knuckles. But she left out all of this, um, you know, anger and frustration yeah. from her body. And then she feels more at peace afterwards and she starts laughing. That's amazing. I love yeah. that. Yeah, I think sometimes it's like when we're feeling, we're not even angry at this point in our lives, but we have anger stored from the past. Yes. And it's just there and it's in our bodies. And so something that is completely unrelated or that would never even really trigger us happen mm. in like it would normally trigger us happens and then we like kind of I don't know we snap or like it, yeah or, it gets triggered by anything yeah, and, exactly. and, sometimes, and sometimes you're not even aware that it's being triggered but it yeah. just your subconscious is yeah. kind of pushing you at it you know pushing you yeah. to it hey she just said it don't you need to react <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> It's like a fraction of a second, but yeah. it happens, you know, and, and, and that's, I've experienced that. And there was after my father died and I was still, you know, um, processing the grief and, and not very well because I was with my mother, as I told you the other day, yeah. I was with my mother for two years after my father died. And during those two years, I, I did not allow myself to grieve yeah. because I didn't want to upset my mother um, and I didn't want to remind my mother of what, you know, what happened because she was going through um, dementia at this point and she keeps forgetting that my father was gone. So I didn't grieve for those two years. But in those two years, the relationships that I severed and destroyed because of the anger that I had inside me when, you know, somebody would do something, even if it was something nice. Mm -hmm. I got angry. Yeah. You know, anger was my response to grief. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be grieving. I was always angry. <laughs> There's always pain and or sadness or underneath anger. Like anger mm -hmm. is like a, I, uh, I recently it's started doing 
craniosacral therapy and it's like peeling back like the layers of what need to be healed. And after my first session, I was so, I felt so angry, like so much anger and it lasted probably for like a week. And I was like, I'm not an angry, I'm not an angry person and I, I have nothing to be angry about, but it was all just old stored you know, old stuff. And then after my second session, that was when like the sadness came. And it, mm. and after the third session, it was even deeper sadness, you know? Mm. So it's like, it's mm. all, it's all there, but it's like layers. And a yes. lot of times, like what you had to be strong for your mom so mm -hmm. was a more appropriate choice. Like you couldn't fall yeah. apart. So yes, that, that's where my power was. I was, yeah. I, I felt powerful in my anger stands yeah. uh, because I was protective. I was, I was like a dragon. Yeah. That's why my, I think my totem animal is dragon, even though it's mythical. <laughs> I was like a dragon. I was breathing fire at everyone and burning everyone, you know, just yeah. one mistake here and one mistake there. And, you know, that's it. You're gone from my life. <laughs> I was so angry, but I realized that after I let go and I allowed myself to grieve, I told you about the EFT session that I went through yeah. to let go of the grief. After that process happened, I was able to um, see what I had da done in the last two years and now started to rebuild those relationships. Amazing. Yeah. And it's not even just about asking for forgiveness from them, but asking for forgiveness from yourself because you did that. You created that for yourself. You created those situations for yourself by not being in tune with you, by not being aware of you, by not acknowledging who you are at the very core. We are all love at the very core. We embody um, love. Yeah. And, and we're not allowing that love to come out yeah. when we're shutting our body down with anger yeah. or hopelessness or powerlessness. Yeah. We're not allow allowing the light of love to shine. Yeah. Yes. Mm. I love that. I mean, at the end of the day, everything is love. Like if you feel, if you feel angry or if you like hate is the same as love, it's just like twisted, you know, it's like, you wouldn't hate somebody if you didn't really love them. You would just feel indifferent, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. it's all love. And mm. it, I think that can be hard to remember because we can get caught up in the moment and I think things can feel really triggering and scary and threatening to mm. us, especially if we have unresolved, you know, yeah. trauma or yeah. like inner child work that needs to be done. But yeah. it is the truth. Like it, 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 everything, we are all love. That is our true expression. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you do that with what you're doing. Um, healing, healing the body yeah. through allowing women to be in tune with what's going on in their body yeah. and allowing them to recognize how their emotions mm -hmm. are affecting parts of their body different parts of their body and and it is a reflection whatever it is that they're experiencing in their body is a reflection of where negative energy is stored mm -hmm. so yeah i mean i i uh, i appreciate that what you do in that you teaching people how to release this negative energy by helping them recognize what's going on in their body yeah i'm learning so much right now about how trauma isn't really psychological it's physiological like it literally mm -hmm. it, it lives in our bodies and to heal it it we have to do we have to work with the body and mm. that's i mean it's like energy work massage nervous yeah. system recalibration um yeah. i'm reading a book right now called healing trauma by peter levine and it's just mm -hmm. I, it's kind of interesting that i i hadn't like gotten into this before because I know it, as a body worker like I'm very well aware of the fact that we store trauma mm -hmm. in our bodies but it seems like it's just so common in our culture to just go to a therapist and like try to talk mm -hmm. about it until you feel mm -hmm. better and that can help like a, a certain amount but at the end of the day if we don't address our like the somatic like the the literal feeling in our body in our tissues like we're only going to heal so much yeah, everything that's going on in our body, every um, dis-ease 
that we are experiencing in our body, every discomfort, has to do with the thoughts that we think. Because every thought that we think is attached to an emotion. Mm -hmm. And that is what is stored in our body. Yeah. Every cell has a memory. Yes. You know, so, so yeah, um, our thoughts change our body. So true. Oh, I'm going to share with you a... <laughs> A funny manifestation story. Yeah, tell me. Uh, you started this with a manifestation um, thing, right? Um, when I was living in the Philippines and I was building a business, it was I was networking with a lot of people, and I got to um, I got to be friends with this group of people, um, mm -hmm. couple, and um, I was going through my first um, science of mind um, workshop. I had just come out of the workshop and I was sharing with them what I learned, you know, in the workshop, I learned that we can talk to our body, right? We can um, address specific parts of our body that we want to change or correct or anything like that. So, and a lot of women um, said to me, well, how do I get rid of this, you know, this fat in my belly? like this uh, without exercise, right? Yeah. That's kind of what we, we want it the easy way, right? So I learned from the workshop that yeah. if, you, um, if you are in tune with your body and you really connect with your, yeah. with your infinite intelligence, with your higher self, yeah. you can talk to your body and, and change it to the way you want. So I said, I said to them, um, you know, when, you, when you're in bed, and before you go to sleep, you just kind of massage or rub your, your belly or whatever part of the body you want yeah. um, to change and just say love and beauty, love and beauty. I love you. You're beautiful. Love and beauty, love and beauty. And, you know, just see what happens, you know. And so because I did that, I, I, I practiced it on myself. And at that time, my youngest one had only turned one and he was still nursing. He was still nursing for me because I had been nursing for so long. Um, and I was at the point where he's about to, to get off the breast, you know, um, it's starting to wean him off the breast. Yeah. Um, my, my breasts were like flat. Yeah. Like they were, they were yeah. drying out, literally yeah. drying out. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the people. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> this doesn't trigger anyone. This <laughs> part of that, right? You know, we are women. We have breasts. That's part of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I was really, I was really sad about that because I used to be voluptuous there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had good breasts and I was yeah. upset that I was losing it. Great. And but I didn't regret the fact that I nursed my child because my child was Great. healthy because of that. Yeah. But I wanted to get my body back to where I wanted it. So that's what I did. I used the love and beauty. I love you. You're beautiful uh, mantra. Yeah. And before you know it, my breasts were back. Like it works. It worked. It, it worked. worked. It, I don't know how long it took, maybe yeah. months yep. or something, but, um, I didn't, I didn't, uh, uh, consciously try to put on weight or anything like that, yeah. but just, I started to notice that my brassiers weren't fitting well anymore. It's a bit yeah. tight. Then yeah. I realized, Oh my God, my breasts are back. <laughs> my breasts are back. That's amazing. I love that. You manifested yeah, boobs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, try it girls try it <laughs> yes, I believe that though because it's like first of all self-love and self-acceptance is so powerful and second of all your body it, it's all energy right so like it's just yes. a reflection of your energetic state and I think that's why we have such a problem with people being so unhealthy or you know hating their bodies is just because our culture we we have become so disconnected from ourselves and from our bodies absolutely absolutely i i mean i can attest to that myself i didn't like my body for a long yeah. time when i was younger i i wasn't comfortable wearing um two-piece yeah. uh, swimsuits yep. because i lived in a country where the culture is you know prudish you know, you've got to cover yourself up. You can't, if you, if you show too much skin, you're a slut. Right. Or you're inviting right. men to, yeah. to come to you. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, I couldn't even leave the house 
without one of my brothers saying, why are you wearing that? You know, if, if I, I'm wearing a sleeveless yeah. dress or something or, or, or a low cut dress, mm -hmm. go change, you know, and this is my older brother. And even, even after I was married, I was pregnant for my first child. We went to visit the Philippines and I, I was going shopping. It was hot in the Philippines. It is hot in the Philippines. So I asked my sister-in-law who was married to my brother and I said, let's go shopping. And so I came downstairs from getting changed and I had on a halter neck dress. Yeah. I was pregnant, right? I was pregnant at this point. And yeah. my brother said, are you wearing that? And I looked at myself and I thought, well, I'm the only one here, so yeah, <laughs> I am wearing this. And if you can't wear that, go, go, um, go and change or grab a jacket and cover yourself up. And I said, why? Because you're in the Philippines and people are going to look at you and men are going to look at you. And I said, well, let them look. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, and we had like a big argument about that. Um, but I went out in it's, that dress. <laughs> it's, so, it's so hard because it's like women are taught not to, to like cover their bodies in mm. one sense and then to reveal their bodies in the other. Like, it's just like a very confusing message. Like mm. you need to mm. be like, you know, pretty enough, but not too pretty, skinny enough, but not too skinny, you know, I know. not approved, but not, you know. Yeah, it's and, and what, really, what really gets me is why men don't have to deal with that. Nobody tells them, are you wearing that? No. <laughs> You're showing so much skin. They never have to deal with that. But women do because, because uh, it has been programmed into society that women can be controlled and should be controlled. And women just kind of lived with that, accepted that for some reason. I'll, well, I mean, I know a lot of women that didn't, <laughs> but a lot more of us need to step up into our power and yes. say, no, I own me. You don't own me. Yeah. You know, I, I do what my body calls me to do. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. And it's just because I believe it's because the feminine is such a powerful force. Oh, absolutely. So that it, they the people who with ill intent want to harness that and control it. It serves mm, their interest mm, uh, mm. because a, a, an empowered woman is a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, so much to talk about. I know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I feel like we we've come full circle it. because we just talked, we talked about empowerment. Again. Yeah. Which yeah, is, we do. Yeah. Which is so awesome. Yeah. Do you want to tell? Um, do you want to tell everybody like how can they work with you? How could do you? Have, you have a master class going on right now. Yes, I have yeah. a master class. You can find my master class group on Facebook. Okay. Um, it's called Inner Power Now Master Class. Awesome. Um, just uh, PM me if you um, if you can't get. I think it's because it's a private group, but it is visible. You can search it. Okay. Um, so if you want to just um, you know test the waters and see um, if we're a match, if you will resonate with what I do, okay. um, come into my master class. It's free um, and just. You know, tell me what it is that you're trying to work on at the moment about yourself, um, how you want to connect with yourself, how you uh, want to recognize your own power. Yeah. Um, uh, come and test out my master class. I also have a program called Inner Power Now Evolution, uh, where I will take you from point A to point B of your of your um, from power from powerless to powerful. That's that's point A and point B. <laughs> That's um, the whole um, gist of the program. And I will take you through processes and exercises um, that will help you test out your own power. Awesome. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. So you actually guide people through exercises Yes, that is so um, it involves, awesome. yeah, it involves meditation, uh, it, in, it involves journaling, okay. um, that's how we really get in touch with ourselves is when we talk to ourselves and we talk to ourselves through our journals and, and a lot of women, and I went through this myself, I stopped journaling at one point because I was in so much pain, I couldn't put anything in writing because it makes it more real for me. 
Yeah. So I avoided looking at it. I avoided looking at what's giving me pain. I tried to ignore it. I tried to distract myself with so many other things um, just so I won't look at it. But the problem with ignoring something is it gets bigger. Yeah. 100%. Until it really gets her attention that yeah. you cannot deny it anymore, that you cannot ignore it anymore. And at that point is when you, when you start, you know, looking for answers and you reach out to people say, oh how can i fix this how can i fix this mm -hmm. and there's a simple fix talk to yourself yeah you have yeah. the answers you Absolutely. you know you your inner wisdom and your higher self has Absolutely. the answers yeah we just forget how to connect with ourselves mm -hmm. and and that that's where my inner power now evolution um, is going to come in. Uh, the program will start in early January because it's a new year. It's the best time to start. Um, but, you know, get in now and I will, you know, see you in the new year. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, this was wonderful and we should definitely do it again. Cause I feel like we have a lot more to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I know we didn't really get into the manifestation part, but um, yeah. I have I had a lot of stories that I had planned to share yeah. with you that are really fantastic um, examples of um, manifesting and the processes that I use to, to manifest. Yeah. Um, but maybe we'll do another one and um, yeah. we'll go through that and not get distracted with all the other <laughs> good stuff. Or maybe we'll get distracted. That. That'll be totally fine too. <laughs> I know, right? You know, I, I enjoyed this conversation Me so too. much. Because I, I feel like we shared a lot of wisdom in yeah. this hour. Yeah. And I hope that someone out there will, you know, will connect with it yeah. and really, really take the steps yes. to, to do something. Yeah, I hope so, too. Yeah. It's going to, whoever's meant to find it is going to find it. That's what I always Absolutely. think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I believe in that law of attraction, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, okay. I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much for this um, opportunity to um, have this conversation and, um, you know, reach maybe people that need to hear it. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you so much. We'll do it again soon, all right? Yes, for sure. I'll okay. enjoy that. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.